All right, so just kind of reviewing the setup of how the government under the Constitution was going to work. Um, a state's population size was going to be important for two different reasons. Uh, as we've already talked about, the first thing that a state's population size would determine mm -hmm. is the number of representatives an individual state would get in the House of Representatives. The larger the population, the more reps you're getting, right? The second thing that would be determined by a state's population is how much that state would have to give in tax money to the federal government. States with larger populations would have to give more in taxes to the federal government. So what's the problem with this? One of the major problems is that um, at this point in time, Southern states still had slaves and the Northern states had largely abolished slavery. So the question was for the Southern states, do we count slaves as part of a state's population count? And this, the Northern states and the Southern states differed greatly in how they answered that question. So, Largely, um, states wanted to count slaves for what would help them and not uh, count them for what would ultimately hurt them. So the southern states wanted to count slaves um, for their population totals for representation purposes, because this means that their populations would be like added to a little bit. And that would give them some additional representatives in the House of Reps and give them an advantage over the northern states. But they absolutely, the southern states, did not want to count slaves as part of a population total for taxation purposes, because this would increase their population totals. And this would mean that they would have to pay a little bit more in taxes. So from a southern state perspective, let's count slaves towards represent representation totals but let's not count them for taxation purposes. The Northern states attack this from the exact opposite direction since they don't have slaves to count. They um, did not want to count slaves for representation purposes, right? They oppose that. Let's not count them for representation purposes because they knew this would give an advantage to the Southern populations, Southern states. But let's count slaves towards a Southern state's uh, total population totals for uh, um, taxation purposes, because this means that Southern states would have to pay a bit more taxes and that would mean the Northern states would pay a bit less. So again, each state wants to count the slaves uh, as part of a state's overall population totals for what will help them and ignore them for basically what would hurt them. So the ultimate compromise to reach the constitutional convention is called the three fifths compromise, where basically three fifths of the slave population in an individual Southern state would be counted towards that state's overall population totals for both taxation and representation purposes. So the Southern states are happy because that means they're getting a bit more out of it in terms of representation. And the Northern states are happy because that also means that the Southern states will be paying a bit more in taxes. The ultimate loser in this whole bargain, this whole compromise are African-American slaves because this runs very much contrary to the idea that all men are created equal, where you're basically saying that a white individual is worth 100% of a person, but an African-American slave is worth three fifths of that person. The overwhelming social and like societal consequences of this um, compromise are felt negatively for a long time uh, as we go through American history.